There's a man in the Donald Trump White House whose name you've heard throughout these January 6 hearings but might not know much about. You should, though, because he's central to some critical disputes about what exactly happened on the day the Capitol was attacked. It's the man you see in the back there, Tony Ornato. This photo is from 2019 when he was a Secret Service agent and accompanied Donald Trump to the North Korean side of the demilitarized zone as head of the president's security detail. Trump liked Ornato enough to give him an unusual promotion later that year, appointing him as deputy chief of staff of operations, a position that essentially oversees the logistics of the president's movements. It was a move Washington Post journalist Carol Lennig called, quote, unprecedented for the Secret Service. Ornato was crossing over from an agency that was apolitical and taking a high-level political appointment in the White House. No Senate approval was required. And his time in that role has been marked by several controversial moments. Remember when law enforcement violently forced demonstrators out of Lafayette Square in June 2020? How they used rubber bullets, flash grenades, and even tear gas? One reason they were forced out was so President Trump could do a photo op holding a Bible at the nearby St. John's Church. Who helped coordinate all of that? Tony Ornato. The Washington Post reported in June 2020, quote, Ornato contacted the Secret Service to arrange for the president to make the trip, according to two people familiar with the plans. The Secret Service alert alerted other law enforcement agencies it would need help clearing the area for the president's safety, they said. Neither the Secret Service nor the White House commented on the Post report. But think about that. A former Secret Service agent reportedly helped coordinate a presidential photo op, which involved the violent removal of largely peaceful protesters. So that's what Ornato was up to in June 2020. Let's move ahead now to January 6, 2021. In their book, I Alone Can Fix It, Donald J. Trump's Catastrophic Final Year, Carol Linnig and her post colleague, Philip Rucker, revealed a conversation on January 6 between Ornato and Pence aide Keith Kellogg while Pence was in a secure area of the Capitol. They say Ornato told Kellogg the Secret Service wanted to move Pence from the Capitol to Joint Base Andrews. Kellogg replied to Ornato that he was worried what would happen if Pence let the Secret Service pull him from the building. Quote, I know you guys too well, Kellogg told Ornato. You'll fly him to Alaska if you have a chance. Don't do it. A chilling remark. Again, Ornato says the conversation never happened. Carol Lennig talked about her reporting of that day recently on MSNBC. He was viewed as being so pro-Trump that he was suspected, yeah. even though he's a professional, he's a careerist Secret Service agent, he was suspected by the vice president's top, one of his top aides, as being someone who would try to whisk Vice President Pence away from the Capitol at a critical moment. That's the Tony Ornato we heard about under oath from former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson. She told the House Select Committee what she says Ornato told her about Trump's actions in the presidential SUV after his rally near the White House before the Capitol attack. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Angle. And Mr. when Mr. Ornato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. How did Ornato respond to that bombshell, which again was under oath? Well, actually, he didn't respond at all. Instead, a Secret Service official told news outlets on Ornato's behalf that Ornato was willing to come before the committee and deny it under oath. We're still waiting for that testimony. So far, we know from House Committee member Zoe Lofgren that Ornato has spoken to them several times. She wouldn't say whether it was in fact under oath, but emphasized it's a crime to lie to Congress regardless. Tony Ornato seems to be central to the story of what the Secret Service did on January 6. So where is Tony Ornato now, after he got that unlikely promotion from Secret Service agent to White House appointee? He's an assistant director at the U.S. Secret Service 
in charge of training new agents. Joining me now, Frank Figluzzi, former assistant director of counterintelligence for the FBI, now an MSNBC national security contributor. Frank, Tony Ornato's name has come up multiple times throughout the January 6 hearings in key moments. Yet people close to him deny that Cassidy Hutchinson's story she gave under oath even happened. What do you make of the denial? Uh, do you think he should be made to come and speak to the committee under oath? So here's the problem. The very fact that we're having to ask ourselves this question is a nightmare for the Secret Service. Its brand, its reputation, its credibility. The fact that we can't even figure out or make sense out of which way is up, who's telling the truth. The fact that the Secret Service came out e almost immediately trying to discredit Cassidy Hutchinson on any normal, in any normal environment, that might be something credible we would need to really pay attention to. But when you p surround it with all the other doubts and questions now with regard to text messaging, with regard to tension between the DHS IG and the Secret Service, we, we don't know what to think. So, um, look, I, I, there are, there's a Washington, D.C. police officer who was involved in that motorcade on January 6th who has come out and said, I, I saw that happen in the, in the limo, in the, in the SUV. Cassidy Hutchinson is giving an accurate account. So we don't know what to think, but here's, here's the bottom line. The Secret Service, more than perhaps any other federal law enforcement agency, needs to preserve absolute neutrality. The moment that they decided to assign Tony Ornato, a senior uh, Secret Service agent who had handled, led the detail protecting Trump, and by the way, served on protective details across administrations, including for Ob Obama and for George W. Bush. The moment they, so they said, yes, give him an operational job inside the White House with an office down the hall from the president, they politicized their agency in an instant. And what concerns me as a student of leadership is that failure to see the gravity of that mistake, of that that would, in that instant, would politicize the agency forevermore, and they'd have to take years to climb back from that. That's what bothers me. And it bothers me the same way with regard to their response to the text messaging, right? We don't know if this is malicious hiding of text or not. What we do know it's, is it is ineptitude with regard to senior leadership, knowing they will become the focus of what happened on January 6th and still deciding to go through with the planned phone migration. You can't throw up your hands and go, well, it was pre-planned phone migration. Really, you couldn't put the brakes on that? You knew that it would lose data? You left it up to individual agents to decide what they wanted to preserve? It's At best, it's horrific leadership. You spent years uh, in the federal system at the FBI. You know well the distinction between political appointments and uh, career professionals and the, the divide that goes there. Uh, and you spoke about how uh, Ornato moving into this political position really stood to taint the reputation of uh, the Secret Service. I, I want to delve into that a little bit more. Uh, under... Uh, Biden, Ornato is now back with the Secret Service training officers. Do you think that it raises legitimate questions about uh, both his position there uh, and even today, not in the Trump administration, but in the Biden administration, uh, the agency's apolitical reputation? There's no question that we're right back to this concept of a blind spot when it comes to the Secret Service's ability to protect itself. You know, they're, they're an elite group known worldwide for protecting uh, the highest ranking officials in our government. But it seems that that desire to protect and defend against all threats has extended through the years to defending at all costs, their own reputation. And when they take that approach, they fail to see that they're undermining their reputation by closing ranks like this. So when you double down and take a political appointee that many, by the way, many Secret Service personnel I speak, I speak to say that was a horrific mistake to give Ornato that position. And now you double down and go, no, we think it was so great. He is going to be the role model, the poster child for new agents at our academy training. He's the guy we want them to emulate. You've got to be kidding me. 
Uh, NBC News reported Thursday that the Department of Homeland Security's internal watchdog has now opened a criminal investigation into the destruction of Secret Service text messages related to those days around the January 6th Capitol riot. Uh, we don't know much else at the moment, but what are the implications of this big story in your view? Yeah, I mean, while we still don't have smoking gun yet, it's clear that the DHS IG has some suspicion, some reasonable suspicions to predicate a criminal case. What, what does that mean? Well, many people have been discussing this issue of lost or deleted text messages, and they've been scratching their heads because most federal agencies, and the FBI has this, for example, they, are, they have a retention system in place. When they migrate data, when they change phone systems or carriers, there's a way to preserve this that's part of the Department of Justice for their agencies. And so people have been asking, what, why doesn't Secret Service have, have that? So the question now becomes, did they have that and did they choose to bypass it for some reason? That's possibly why the DHSIG has said there's more to this than just an accidental uh, loss of data.